as any Christian will admit to. They have seen their pastors do this before their own eyes. And there are literally millions of videos online of pastors from every denomination known to man standing before the people in prayer with hands closed in the exact same way the pagans of old did unto Baal and then Roman Catholic priests have done since they have mixed Christianity with paganism. As we know, it is prophesied that ravenous wolves will gain the pulpits who will then wander after the beast in Rome to do as their dying God commands they do so as to gather the people of the world into the camp of Rome. And so sadly, if you scan the videos online, you will see Seventh-day Adventist pastors in the church as well as those that have left the church mocking the Lord your God while standing in prayer with hands closed before the people as if they need not bow or even raise their hands toward heaven when praying unto the creator of the universe. Unto these apostate pastors I declare, King Solomon kneeled when in prayer before the people. Daniel the prophet kneeled in prayer three times a day. Many seekers of the Lord kneeled before Jesus. Jesus our Savior and King kneeled in prayer unto our Father. Stephen, who was stoned for his faith, kneeled in prayer. Peter the Apostle kneeled in prayer. And Paul kneeled in prayer before the people. Now, these are only a few of the times it is mentioned in the Word of God wherein men raised holy hands unto heaven and knelt in prayer. There are quite a few more. But I hope these few verses are enough to open the eyes of some souls still trapped in apostasy. All these patriarchs and prophets knelt in perfect reverence unto our mighty God while in prayer. And yet it is a very rare thing to see Seventh-day Adventist ministers kneeling in prayer these days. Just search out the videos online and you'll see this firsthand. And if the Bible is not sufficient evidence unto you so as to declare your leaders in the church and outside the church are literally in open sin as prophecy predicted they would be, see what is declared in the spirit of prophecy regarding all this. One who has been educated for about five years in Battle Creek was asked to lead in prayer before Sister White should speak to the people. But as I beheld him standing upright upon his feet, while his lips were about to open in prayer to God, my soul was stirred within me to give him an open rebuke. Calling him by name, I said, Get down upon your knees. This is the proper position always. And it's also stated in her writings that both in public and in private worship, it is our privilege to bow on our knees before the Lord when we offer our petitions to him. Jesus, our example, kneeled down in prayer. Of his disciples, it is recorded that they too kneeled down and prayed. Paul declared, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In confessing before God the sins of Israel, Ezra knelt. Daniel kneeled down upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God. True reverence for God is inspired by a sense of his infinite greatness and a realization of his presence. With this sense of the unseen, Every heart should be deeply impressed. The hour and place of prayer are sacred because God is there. And as reverence is manifested in attitude and demeanor, the feeling that inspires it will be deepened. Holy and reverend is his name, the psalmist declares. Angels, when they speak that name, veil their faces. With that reverence, then, should we, who are fallen and sinful, take it upon our lips. Thank you for watching. God bless.